Welcome back to the three months of Modal Logics, the sequel to 100 Days of Logic here at Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at doxastic and epistemic semantics. Now, before we get too much into this video, a little bit of a precaution. This video is going to be, even though it's coming early in the series, a little bit more complicated than some of the other videos here. Semantics is a tough thing sometimes to wrap your head around, so if you get lost or get confused in this video and the next video, don't worry. Things are going to get a little bit simpler after this, and you're not necessarily going to need these videos in order to do the rest of the series. With that out of the way, let's get started. So semantics, as you may remember, is the study of meaning. I offered two kind of preliminary definitions of belief and knowledge in the previous video, but here I'm going to offer a more rigorous semantic definition of each of those concepts. These definitions are ones that are used by J. Hintika to define exactly what is meant by belief and knowledge in terms of Kripkean semantics. Hopefully at some point in the future I'm going to do a video or a video series on Kripkean semantics. For now, we're just going to get kind of a basic idea of what we're talking about. So, the accessibility relation. We may remember, if you watched earlier videos in this series, when discussing deontic semantics, we explained that a relation that holds between worlds can be called the accessibility relation. This relation holds between two worlds, I and J, if and only if all propositions that are true in I are possible in J. It holds between worlds if all propositions that are true in I are possible in J. For doxastic and epistemic modal logics, we're going to be looking at a very similar relation to help us define our semantics. It's going to be an agent-centered accessibility relation. So, we're now going to find two new relations which deal with agents and possible worlds. A particular world, J, is epistemically, or knowledge, accessible to an agent S in world I. So agent S is in world I, and some other world, J, is epistemically accessible to S, even only if the set of all propositions that agent S knows in I are compatible with all true propositions in J. In other words, J would be considered an epistemic alternative world. And in fact, all worlds that are like J are going to be considered epistemic alternatives. So the epistemic accessibility relation holds between a world I, a world J, and an agent S, if and only if, for all P and all Q, S knows that P in I and Q is true in J implies that it's not the case that either P implies not Q or Q implies not P. Basically, that S's knowledge is consistent with all true propositions of world J. Where I and J are worlds, S is an agent, and P and Q are propositions. We'll use this as EPAC in proofs. So basically, say for example that in the actual world, Vivian knows only one thing that she exists. This means the actual world bears the epistemic accessibility relation for Vivian to any world in which she exists. All worlds in which she exists are epistemic alternatives for her. A world being doxastically accessible, on the other hand, to another world will work much in the same way. Some worlds, I and J, bear the doxastic accessibility relation to each other. For some agent S, if and only if for all of agent S's beliefs in I, those beliefs are compatible with all truths of world J. So, once again, doxastic accessibility holds between two worlds, I and J, and some subject S. This relation will hold if and only if for all P and all Q, where P and Q are propositions. S believes that P in world I and Q is the case in world J implies that it's not the case that P implies not Q or Q implies not P. We use that as DXAC in proofs. With these understood, here are Hintika's definitions of knowledge and belief. So agent S believes P in world I if and only if P is true in all worlds, doxastically accessible to I for S. Once again, agent S believes P in world I if and only if P is true in all worlds doxastically accessible to I for S. So, 
Logically, that can be put as S believes that P in world I, if and only if, for all worlds W, the doxastic accessibility relation holds between I and W, for P implies that P is the case in W. Right? Hopefully that makes sense. So, Agent S knows that P in world I, if and only if, P is true in all worlds epistemically accessible to I for S. So, S knows that P in I, if and only if, for all worlds W, W bears the epistemic accessibility relation to I for S implies that for all P, P is true in W. For all P that S knows. Right? We'll do that as no def in proofs. Hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense. Basically, what we're saying is you believe something if it is true in all worlds that are doxastically accessible to you, that thing is true. Or, in other words, that all worlds that are compatible with your beliefs have that thing true. Or you know something if in all worlds compatible with your knowledge, that thing is true. It's a complicated idea, so hopefully you have a little bit of a sense of it, but we're going to talk more about it in the next video. So, if Antigua is correct, that would mean that Jay Sean believes that math is fun if and only if for all worlds that are compatible with all of Jay Sean's beliefs, it is true that math is fun. Hopefully that makes sense. Once again, might be a little complicated. If you're not quite sure, watch the next video, because as a good skeptic, I'm concerned with these definitions of knowledge and belief for a number of reasons. I'm going to offer these objections and some more examples of how these definitions work in the following video. So stay tuned if you're still lost, watch the video again, and as always, check out the SEP, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, for more information. Up next, we're going to be doing objections to Hintika's semantics, of course, from the skeptic. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day all the way up till the end of the year. Stay skeptical, buddy.